Uh, in today's lecture, we will start looking at uh, some of the properties of uh, marginals, uh, which lead to uh, one of uh, uh, concept, one of deep concepts in uh, calculus, um, namely uh, convexity and concavity. So, before introducing that concept, let us uh, um, look at uh, the scenario in mathematically. Let x represent a single input that is used to produce an output y. That means, y is a function of x and the functional relationship is represented as y equal to f of x. So, x is, uh, x is the input and y is the output of some quantity whatever it may be. So, we will later on see examples to illustrate this. So, in that case, we uh, the product function, uh, the production function is given by uh, this is what is called the production function, right? Okay, fine. So, now look at the derivative of this. So, uh, if this is called the product function or the production function, so marginal of the product will be the derivative of this function. So, marginal MP of x is the marginal and that is equal to f uh, dash of x that is the derivative of the function f of the product function or the production function. Now, one would like to know if the marginal is increasing, if the marginal is a function of x again, it is a derivative of a, uh, we have assumed that the function f is differentiable everywhere. So, derivative is again a function. So, marginal is a function of the input x again. So, uh, if the marginal is decreasing, right, if this marginal is decreasing as input is increasing called the law of diminishing uh, marginal product. That is f is decreasing right implies the derivative of that okay derivative of f dash should be less than 0 okay so that is what uh, so the point we am trying to make is that saying something about uh, the marginal is revealed about the property of the second derivative of the marginal of the function product function. So, that is the second derivative. So, this we want to study mathematically more deeply. So, what we do is the following. Similarly, marginal is increasing. If the marginal is increasing, right, that means the input is increasing. Okay. If the marginal is increasing, that means here there is a mistake, input is decreasing. So, if the marginal is increasing as output is increasing, then f dash is an increasing function and that means what f double dash must be bigger than 0. So, all this we want to make it uh, mathematically very precise. So, let us uh, look at uh, 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 mathematically what this means. Of course, the second scenario uh, in economics uh, does not seem to be a, a plausible situation where it says that the marginal is increasing as output is increasing. So, that does not seem to be uh, a very good situation in economics. So, let us come back to mathematics and then see how do we imply. So, for example, uh, if, if uh, in economics for example, if all other inputs are fixed and if x represents for example, labor, then it is not true that increase in labor will give you increase in marginal that is greater in increments in uh, output that may not always happen that we know. So, that is why this scenario may not always happen, right. So, uh, let us continue with our examples of uh, monopoly market that we have been looking at. So, we have looked at um, an example of a monopoly firm with the demand price function P q equal to 10 and cost function as uh, C q equal to 5 q. For this, we wrote down the various uh, uh, functions P equal to um, 10 q minus 1. So, here P q was 10. So, q on the other side if you take it, so you get price demand relationship P is equal to 10 q minus 1. The revenue function is P q, so that comes out to be multiplication is equal to 10 that is a constant function. And then you look at the profit function, the <coughs> revenue function minus the cost function that comes out uh, 10 minus 5 q. So, the, we had done this, I am just revising it. First, so, we observe that the output is reduced the price rises, but the revenue remains unchanged. So, uh, in this example, this is what the observation we had made, the output is reduced, 
then the price is rise if the output is reduced because it is one over q so if output is reduced the price will go up but the revenue remains constant so though it pays to reduce output it is not really it cannot be done because you cannot reduce output as much as you like you cannot make it a fractional kind of a thing so in reality this scenario is not really useful that is what we had observed and for this model we had computed the coefficient of uh, elasticity which came out to be 1. So, coefficient of elasticity this is a uh, unit coefficient of elasticity example. So, let us look at one more example. So, consider the variation of this uh, example namely consider a firm with demand price as p square q equal to 1 and the cost function as uh, c q equal to 2 q. So, here uh, the cost price function demand price function is given by this. So, if you want to write uh, p as a function of q then p square is equal to 1 over q. So, p will be equal to square root of 1 over q. So, that we can do. So, we can write p as a function of q to be q uh, square root of uh, q. Mm, so, we are written it as q raised to power minus 1 by 2. Okay. So, the um, revenue function is p into q. So, this is p and uh, into q. So, that gives you q raised to power q raised to power half into q raised to power 1. So, total power becomes q raised to power half. And the profit function is given by uh, r q minus c q. So, r q is here q raised to power half and c q is equal to 2 q. So, when you put that values you get the profit function to be equal to q raised to power half minus 2 q. So, all the basic functions are there. So, now we can uh, observe that reducing the output if you reduce the output see q is equal to q raised to power half. So, this is a um, uh, increasing function as such. So, if you uh, increase the output r q will go up. So, reducing the output if you other way around if you reduce the output then the re revenue uh, is also reduced. Uh, but you can do it only when uh, till q remains a positive value. So, that means uh, if you increase q then uh, r q is going to increase and if you reduce q then the revenue is going to decrease. So, profit is going to increase. So, at some positive value the maximum profit can occur. So, that is the uh, this model says that uh, positive uh, uh, at some positive uh, maximum profit at some positive value will occur. So, graphically let us uh, plot these two functions p is equal to 10 q minus 2. So, uh, uh, p q is not 10 it is just q raised to power minus 2 and m c q m c q is equal to 2. So, let us plot this. So, uh, this is the uh, uh, this blue one is the uh, uh, revenue function which was equal to q raised to power half so that is a, a revenue function and uh, the cost function is c 2 q that is a cost function that is a linear function. So, that is it and uh, pi q the profit function is q raised to power half minus 2, 2 q and that is the graph of it. So, if you <coughs> look at uh, the graph. Uh, as the production uh, increases it keeps on increasing and then it starts decreasing after some point onwards. So, the profit occurs uh, at the value when d is equal to 0 0.6. Uh, not a very realistic situation, but still uh, from the graph that is what we get. So, um, if you want to verify it mathematically we will look at the derivative of uh, the profit function. So, that is equal to this right recall the derivative uh, pi was equal to this. So, derivative of this will be half q raised to power half minus 1 into 2 uh, minus 2 derivative of 2 q is 2. So, we can put this value in the derivative function. So, we get the derivative equal to this. So, which uh, we want to, uh, want to want to maximize this we have to put derivative equal to 0 to look for the possible values. So, when you put it equal to 0 q comes out to be 1 over uh, 16 uh, from this equation. So, 2 into 2 4. So, q raised power half is equal to 4. Um, so, q will be equal to 1 over uh, 16. So, that is approximately 0 0.6. So, that is a point where possibly the maximum value can occur. One can verify it uh, uh, 
by the second derivative test if you like or uh, you can check it from the first derivative. So, we leave it for you to check that this point is a point of absolute maximum for the function. So, that is how you will verify it mathematically uh, from this what is visible from the graph can be verified mathematically. So, let us calculate the coefficient of uh, elasticity uh, for uh, coefficient of elasticity of demand uh, for this uh, function. So, that comes out to be uh, by formula it is dq by dp into p by q. So, put the values and uh, simplify that comes out to be equal to 2. So, again this is an example of a uh, uh, constant uh, demand con co constant coefficient of elasticity of demand that is 2 which is bigger than 1 and uh, in this uh, model uh, the profit is maximized at some point ok, though not very realistic. So, that is the mathematical way of uh, saying things and what they imply in terms of economics. So, again the coefficient of elasticity is constant, but it is bigger than 1 ok. So, let us look at uh, uh, just recalling then in the example of unit elasticity that we had discussed in the previous lecture and we have revised uh, today uh, also in the beginning, profit could be increased as much needed theoretically. So, there we said that if you make uh, output uh, smaller and smaller the profit uh, keeps on increasing, but uh, that is only theory. In practice you cannot make uh, um, the production uh, how much you produce to be very very small. So, but that was unit elasticity uh, scenario and in the present case we have again the coefficient of elasticity is constant, but the value is equal to 2 it is more than 1 and in this case reducing output reduces total revenue. So, that means if you increase the output you will increase the revenue and a positive value of output exists giving the maximum profit and that is what we observed uh, happened at the point uh, q equal to 0.6. So, the, uh, we are relating the coefficient of elasticity with the existence of profit maximum profit and so on. So, this is uh, the two uh, comparison of the two scenarios. Let us consider one more example still namely uh, consider a firm uh, with the demand function to be equal to p raised to power minus half and the cost function to be equal to 2 q. So, with this uh, scenario uh, let us write down the functions. So, uh, if you q is equal to p raised to power minus half. So, if you take it on the other side p raised to power half will be equal to 1 over q. So, when you square both sides you will get the relation p is equal to 2 q uh, p is equal to q raised to power minus 2. So, that is the relation between the price and uh, the quantity being produced. Once again note that uh, this q to the power minus 2 means it is equal to 1 over 2 to the power q 1 over q square. So, as q decreases p is going to increase. So, once again the decrease in cost uh, decrease in the quantity produced increases the uh, price ok. So, uh, so this is what we call as a inverse demand function ok. So, the revenue function for this will be equal to uh, p into q uh, as usual price into the quantities being produced p is equal to q raised to power minus 2 into q. So, that becomes uh, revenue is equal to q raised to power minus 1 ok. So, if we look at uh, the derivative of uh, this revenue function and that is q raised to power minus 1, its derivative will be minus 1 into q raised to power minus 1 minus 1. So, that is equal to minus q minus 2 minus of q raised to power minus 2. So, whatever we q uh, it is 1 over q square. So, that is going to be negative. So, that means what? Uh, so, the derivative of a function being negative the function is going to be a decreasing function. So, revenues will rise as uh, uh, q falls ok. So, this is going to be a decreasing function. So, uh, because uh, uh, is 1 over q right or q. So, this one we are deducing it from here look at it. So, revenue is equal to 1 over q. So, if uh, uh, q falls 
that means what q becomes smaller 1 over q is going to become bigger so revenues will rise as q falls so that is a conclusion from this equation okay this only says that uh, it is uh, a decreasing function okay so uh, the marginal of cost is equal to 2 uh, that means uh, implying that cost will also fall as uh, q falls okay so that is positive right so a firm can increase profit by reducing output as long as q remains positive so uh, profit can be increased by reducing uh, uh, q so that is what the outcome of this says so let us look at the various graphs we can plot them so uh, for this uh, this is cq that is a linear function so that is the straight line uh, the demand function is p equal to q raised to power minus 2 that is a green one so this is the green function so this is the function which is uh, q raised to power minus 2 and the blue one is the revenue function that is q raised to power uh, minus 1 okay so uh, the profit function is pi q so that is q raised to power minus 1 minus 2 q so that is this graph so that is a profit function so these are the various uh, uh, functions related with the economic scenario which help us to say a few things um, for this model the coefficient of elasticity is 1 by 2 which is less than uh, 1 so that is uh, that one can compute and we will do that and see that it comes out to be equal to 1 by 2 so here uh, there is a, a nice observation here that if you look at this green graph the green is uh, the demand function okay and uh, the blue one is the revenue they intersect here so what does that intersection mean that means at this point uh, the quantity produced that price is equal to the uh, revenue so that will be the uh, conclusion of this there are other various other interpretations one can make that depending upon what you are looking at let us look at uh, one more example for uh, um, our scenario and that is as follows consider a book uh, publishing house that pays the author a royalty of 15 percent so when you publish a book the publisher uh, prints the book sells the books and then uh, the author is given a part of the selling price of the book as the profit as the royalty so uh, this publisher is offering author a royalty of 15 percent the demand for the book the demand function for the book is given by uh, 200 minus 5p right and the production cost for the publisher to produce the book is uh, given by uh, 10 plus 2q plus the q square this has been a typo here this is a small q but that is same as notation is q that is the uh, quantity is being produced right so it is 2q plus q square okay so this scenario being given what is it one is interested in uh, the author would like that there should be uh, maximum possible profit for him from the royalties that means uh, uh, he would like to know uh, the number of books that should be sold by the publisher so that it profit uh, is maximized on the other hand the publisher would like to know uh, what is the uh, optimal uh, scenario where his uh, revenues will be his profit will be maximized so this is uh, profit of the uh, publisher versus the royalty of the author so we would like to know this so find the optimal sales from both the publishers and the author's perspective so we would like to know from author's point of view and publisher's point of view how much uh, the author thinks the publisher should be selling so that uh, his share of royalties is maximum and on the other hand the author uh, would like to know how much he should sell how many books he should sell so that his profit is maximum because he has to produce the books uh, he has to spend on the cost he has to give a royalty and so on so let us try to solve these two problems the first the q 
is 200 minus 5 p, right? So that gives you p in terms of q as uh, uh, 5 p is equal to 200 uh, minus q. Uh, there is something uh, 5 p is equal to 200 by q. So that is. So uh, let us uh, see what is the typo here. So here 5 p goes that side is equal to 200 minus q. Right. So that is 200 minus q. So that means divided by 5 that is 4 minus 1 by 4 q. So that, that should be uh, 1 by 4 q and uh, so there is a uh, typo here. Okay. So let us see if that is corrected. Yeah. So that is 40 minus. So this is this part is uh, extra here uh, 0.2 q that is there. That is that part is okay. So this typo that minus 40 is extra term here. From this equation, p is equal to 40 minus 0.2 q, right? Okay, well, divide by 5. So author's income will be given by, so 15 percent of uh, the royalty, right? So again, it should be 15 by 100 here, not 10. So this should be 15 by 100 here. 15 by 100 into p, so that is the selling price. So that is uh, his profit and q units are sold. So that will be his uh, royalty of the author. Okay. So once you do that, so that is 0 0.15 and uh, uh, 0.15 of uh, p into q. So p is uh, 40 minus 0.2 q into q and q the value of q is equal to 200 uh, minus uh, uh, into q itself. right? So when you simplify this equation, you will get 6 q minus 0.03 q square. So uh, simple calculation will tell you this is so modulo this typo here, it should have been 100 here and once you simplify it should come out to be this. So what we want to do is optimize this function which is 6 q minus uh, 0.03 q square. So to maximize that we look at the derivative so that will be 6 minus 2 comes down so 0 0.06 q. And to find out the possible point where it can have a, a maximum we have to put it equal to 0. So this equation gives you q equal to 100. So at q equal to 100 possibly um, the uh, maximum of uh, the revenue of uh, the author will be there when there is sale of 100 books. Um, how do you know this is the uh, maximum uh, point of maxima? Well one can differentiate this again if you like. So double dash uh, second derivative of this function will be minus uh, of 0 0.06 and that is a negative quantity. So if the derivative is negative uh, at a point, actually it is a negative constant everywhere. So the uh, point of uh, critical point should be a maximum. So q is equal to 100 is the optimal which the author can hope that if the publisher sells 100 books, he will make a, uh, his profit or his revenue or his uh, royalty will be maximum. So uh, let us call this as QA to be equal to 100. Let us look at uh, from the point of view of uh, the publisher, uh, the profit of the publisher will be RQ minus CQ, right, minus the royalties he has to pay to the author. So now normally the profit is RQ minus CQ, but here he is also incurring a exp running exp expenditure depending on how many books he sells, he is to give a profit he has to give 15 percent of royalty to the, so that means RQ is minus CQ minus RAQ. So let us put the value RQ is PQ, CQ is uh, here uh, there is a, a typo again here, it should have been Q instead of X, instead of X is Q square, so 10 plus 2 Q plus Q square minus RAQ we got it 6 Q minus 0.03 Q square. So in this, uh, in this calculation, please treat X as capital Q. Okay. So uh, once you do that and you simplify this equation, so uh, this comes out to be uh, 32 minus Q minus 1.32 Q. So it, it is not Q X square, it is Q square. So X is extra here minus 10. So I am sorry for the typos here. So that uh, comes out to be equal to this.
So when you do to optimize the profit function, so there is no uh, uh, x here, it is q square. So once you want to maximize this, you have to differentiate 32q, derivative will be 32. 1.32q square will give you 2 times 1.32 that is uh, 2.46 and q and that equal to 0 gives you the value uh, maximum profit being q. Anyway, modulo this uh, minor arithmetical typos you will find out by the derivative test. First derivative equal to 0, um, find the derivative of uh, the profit. Here the only uh, uh, thing to be noted is profit is r q minus c q the revenue minus the cost so revenue is p q cost function is given minus the revenue of the author uh, that has to be subtracted from to find out the profit. So it gives you q equal to partial derivative to be uh, sorry the derivative first derivative equal to 13. So that means that the possibly the maximum can occur at the point of 13 once again if you take the second derivative that comes out to be negative. So this is the point of maximum for the uh, function pi q also. So as far as uh, um, author is concerned, uh, the publisher should be uh, selling 100 books while the publisher uh, to maximize his revenue uh, thinks he should be selling only 13 books. So there is a conflict of interest between the two. So the uh, publisher would like to sell lesser number of books to maximize his profit whether uh, uh, right the lesser number of books than the author thinks. So this is a comparative statement we can get from, uh, so all this analysis uses the uh, uh, properties of uh, derivative and its applications. One can look at uh, the uh, graphical representation of this and that is nothing but saying that you look at uh, this, this is the publisher's profit function, this red one and the green one is author's revenue function. So that uh, maximizes at the point of uh, uh, 100. So when 100 books are sold, author's profit is, uh, author's royalty is maximum. And when it is only uh, 13, then the publisher's uh, profit is maximum. And here is an interesting uh, scenario that graphically these two intersect at the point G. So G is the value which will give you equal amount of profit for uh, uh, the publisher as well as the author. So both will have uh, same uh, amount of uh, take home or whatever you want to, the publisher's profit will be equal to the royalty. But that rarely happens, always publishers would like to make more money on the sale of books than the author can get. So this is how uh, we um, will use. Uh, the calculus and its derivatives, uh, properties of the calculus uh, to maximize or minimize the problems. So let me just have a recap of what we have been doing till now. Namely, we looked at uh, the scenario of uh, how calculus uh, is used in optimization problems. We looked at increasing, decreasing our functions. We looked at the critical points in terms of the derivative. We had the condition in the beginning that if a function has a local maxima or a local minima at a point and if the function is differentiable at that point, the derivative must be equal to 0. So this is a crucial uh, theorem that helps you to locate the possible points where the function can have a um, extremal value. So given a function uh, and look at the domain of the function, see if there are any endpoints in the domain of the function look at the points where the function is not differentiable and the points are interior or look at the interior points where the derivative is equal to 0. So that gives you the possible points where the function can have extremal values, the maxima or the minima. To analyze which of them is a maxima, which of them is a minima, you have to apply various tests. You can apply the continuity test, you can apply the first derivative test or you can apply the second derivative test. So in all these tests, uh, please be sure that um, the uh, conditions are satisfied uh, because for the first derivative test, uh, uh, for the first uh, continuity test, the function should be continuous and uh, if it is 
continuous at that point and it is in increasing on the left, decreasing on the right, then it will be a, a local maximum and other way around. For the first derivative test, we do not need the function to be differentiable at that point. We only need that on the left side the derivative should be say positive. On the right side of the function uh, point, the derivative is um, negative, then uh, there will be a point of local maximum and similarly for local minimum. And the second derivative test is that once you have located a point uh, where possibly it can have a local maximum or minimum, if the function has second derivative at that point and it is bigger than 0, then it is a point of local minimum and if it is less than 0, it is a local maximum. And these critical points also give a help you to analyze absolute maxima and absolute minima of a function. The only condition is that you should ensure that the absolute maximum and the absolute minimum exist. So, out of all the critical points, look at the points where the largest value of the function takes place and the smallest value takes place. So, you will locate the points of absolute maxima and minima. So, this is how calculus tools are used to locate optimal uh, solutions or optimizations. We will continue with our study of applications of uh, calculus tools in some finer aspects of analyzing functions in the next lecture. Thank you.